Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I got a rant for you today. But before we jump in, I want to thank you for your continued support of our channel. We appreciate your subscription, your likes, your follows, your shares. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're here, go ahead and subscribe right now. I greatly appreciate it. Go hit that button in the bottom right corner. And not to mention, for those of you who have been here for a minute, be, please become a member of our Come On Now, the podcast family so you can get, you know, your uh, membership content for you, uh, membership lives, etc. Let's talk about this comment, th- this topic at hand. Uh, the topic at hand here is Paige Beckers. Paige Beckers is now coming back for her fifth season at University of Connecticut, UConn. And right now, if you look at what is going on, she is obviously proclaimed to be the next Caitlin Clark. Or she was supposed to be Caitlin Clark before Caitlin Clark became Caitlin Clark. But I, I want to talk about this this situation with with uh, Paige Beckers because Paige Beckers, Cheryl Swoops, where are you right now? Because I want to hear you mention that Paige Beckers is twenty five. I want to hear you mention that she took four th- forty shots a game. I want to hear all these things that you mentioned about Caitlin Clark, when in fact none of them were true. But what is actually factual about Ka- about Paige Beckers is that Paige Beckers turned twenty three beginning of October this year. So Paige Beckers is 23 years old. She's playing against 18, 19, 20-year-olds. UConn opened the season up ranked in the preseason top 25, number two behind South Carolina, and USC is ranked third, Texas fourth, and then depending on how you have it, each poll, one has UCLA fifth, one has Notre Dame fifth, the other one has Notre Dame a lot of this stuff is, is very, very similar. When Paige Beckers came back for her fifth year of, of college basketball, she had the right to do so, and she did so. Even though she averaged 21-plus points per game as a senior last year um, and a redshirt junior or whatever she was classified as, I'm, I'm not sure, I don't, don't really care. Um, she came back after averaging 21-plus points per game, going to the Final Four, and when she would have been pretty much guaranteed to be the second pick of the draft last year. So you had the first pick of the draft being Caitlin Clark. Paige Beckers would have been the second pick of the draft. So why did she go back to school? If you're guaranteed pretty much to be the second pick of the draft, why would you go back to school and play college basketball? I mean, obviously, NIL money might play a part in it. But as you see, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese are making hand over fist in endorsement deals in the WNBA from the various companies that supported them while they were in college and now are playing professional basketball, and they continue to support them. Uh, I think Angel Reese's companies are doing a better job supporting Angel Reese than they are than the ones for Caitlin Clark. And I think that uh, myself and, and Ben Daniel, we went over that conversation about the agent of Caitlin Clark and how we think that person is failing Caitlin Clark. At this point, as we don't have a, a sneaker for Caitlin Clark yet, which is absolutely preposterous. But Paige Beckers went back to school. I want to know why that, that decision has not been criticized. I'd love to know. I want to know from people why that has not been widely spoken about, widely attacked, widely talked about. You're If you're at this level that Paige Beckers is at, and you're in men's college basketball, there's no way in hell you go back to school. It's all cute, and and it's all great, and yeah, she wants to win a national championship. I would tell you this. If her team remains healthy, and they don't win a national championship, then she will go down as a failure. I repeat that. She will go down as a failure. There's no other way to view it. She was when she when she came out of school, she was considered the best player in high school women's basketball that we had seen in forever. She was number one in everyone's mind. She was the the elite of the elite, the five star, number one pick, number one recruit, national player of the year. She was everything. But what has she not done so far? 
what she has not done so far is she has not won a national championship. And in the world of UConn, that seems to trump all is winning a national championship. You, you notice how they always fluff, fluff the fact that Brianna Stewart won four national championships and tell everyone she's the greatest thing ever. Well, Paige Beckers would be the, I mean, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but she would probably be the most elite basketball player in the last 30 years. Yeah, 30 years at UConn to not win a national championship if they don't get it done this year. I know South Carolina is ranked ahead of them. I know they're the defending national champs. But I want you to get a look of this Connecticut roster. This Connecticut roster. Aubrey Griffin, McDonald's All-American. AZ Fudd, National Player of the Year. Number one recruit in 21, McDonald's All-American. Ayanna Patterson, McDonald's All-American. She was number one wing in the country, number four overall. Carolyn Ducharme, I guess how you pronounce her name. Pronounce her name. Number five overall, McDonald's All-American. Ice Brady, McDonald's All-American, number five ranked in her class. Morgan Shelley Fred, that's pronounced it. McDonald's All-American, number 11 player in her class. Ashlyn, Sh Ashlyn Shade, McDonald's All-American, number 15 in her class. K.K. Arnold, McDonald's All-American, number six in her class. Ali Zeibel, number seven in her class, McDonald's All-American. And most recently, Sarah Strong, number one player in the country last year, freshman, national player of the year, McDonald's All-American. That is, and that doesn't include Paige, obviously. And then you have the two, the three players who are not McDonald's All-Americans who are on the UConn roster. Jana L. Alfie. She played for the Egyptian national team. In the 2023 FIBA World Cup under 19, she averaged 21.4 points per game and 11 rebounds. She didn't play last year. She was hurt. She's now going through her third year at UConn. She's a national team player in, in Egypt. And Kwadin, or Kadeen Samuels, number 41 player in the country in her class, which is still, for many schools, that would be the best player they have on their team. And then you have Caitlin Chen. Caitlin Chen is a grad transfer. She is a grad transfer, grad transfer from Princeton. She averaged 15.8 points per game and five assists. So you have 11 McDonald's All-Americans on this basketball team, including Paige Beckers, and three national players of the year, including Paige Beckers. This team is absolutely loaded. Absolutely loaded. And the leader of the team is an adult woman. She's an adult. Paige Beckers is an adult. She's 23 years old. She's 23. You call it what you want to call it. People found a way to be critical of Caitlin last year, namely Cheryl Swoops. Why aren't you talking about Paige Beckers being older than everybody out there? Caitlin Clark could have gone back to school, if you recall. Caitlin Clark could have gone back to school. Angel Reese could have gone back to school. I'm not, I don't know if Cardoso could have gone back to school, but a lot of these women could have gone back to school. And they didn't. They wanted to be professionals. It makes me question the killer instinct of Paige Beckers, the dog in Paige Beckers. She's a great player. She's a great player. She's a great player. But why would you not turn pro? Cardoso played four years, so she probably could have gone back to school. I I'm just trying to understand the, the thought process and the logic of not turning pro when you can and rather going back to school, doing homework. I guess she's probably in grad school now, I would think. But I'm trying to understand the logic and the thought process that would make someone who is ready to play in the professional play professional basketball why she would go back to UConn. Is it because she thinks they're going to have a cakewalk to the national championship because of how much talent they have and erase that issue that she has from her, 
resume is that she's never won a national championship at UConn. Could that be it? I mean, it could be. It could be. But I think it's rather pathetic that every single time someone talked about Caitlin and they mentioned Paige Beckers and they make these comparisons, Caitlin Clark played four years of college basketball. Caitlin Clark was a better player than Paige Beckers was in college. Paige Beckers was a great one. Has been a great one. She went to the Final Four as a freshman. She was not better than Caitlin Clark as a freshman. She was not. Caitlin Clark averaged almost 27 points per game as a freshman. Paige did not. Yeah, Paige went to the Final Four, playing on a loaded UConn team. That's all she plays on, loaded squads. This is the history of UConn. The only team that has remotely close to the talent level of UConn is South Carolina. South Carolina is absolutely stacked. They are filled with McDonald's All Americans too. I mean, you got one, two, uh, three, uh, yeah, three so far, four. There's a few that don't have a profile. Five. Okay, she's not. Uh, five. Six. Seven. National player of the year there. I have to check on these other freshmen that are coming in, but I'm sure some of those freshmen are McDonald's All Americans as well. So at least seven, at least seven. Um, yeah, at least seven of them. So they have a loaded squad too, as as they did before. But end of the day, like I I, I mean. You were, you went back, so eight, this one is also, here's eight. Uh, wow, look at this. This girl got her own website, bro. Like, this is bananas. This is crazy. This is a college, a high school, a girl that's a freshman in college, has her own website. Um, I'm trying to confirm this one was an McDonald's All American. Um, yeah, so the one of them would have been, but she was hurt, so she couldn't play in it. But they have, they have at least nine. All that said is, you have two teams that are completely stacked. USC is nowhere near the talent level of these two teams up at the top. This is going to be a battle of UConn, South Carolina for the national championship, more than likely. But I just find it very intriguing and interesting that Paige Beckers had a chance to become a pro when she chose to go back to school. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. It doesn't make sense. And it and it showed and it reeks of weakness. And I want to know why people aren't talking about it. I want to know why people aren't saying anything about why she went back to school. I mean, obviously, Juno Ariema has got to be thrilled because it could potentially break his streak of losing. And not winning the national championship because he doesn't he he can't possibly go through that type of losing, you know. Because for him, if it's not a national championship, you lost. You know, you have another player here. I mean, can't Cam Brink could have gone back to school. She didn't go back to school. Okay, uh, Jackson. She could could she have gone back to school? No, okay, she was out. She had five years, so maybe she was she had to turn pro. Um, but who or who knows with the COVID year, you never know. All that said, I want to know, I want to get a people's opinions. Why in the world is Paige Beckers not getting talked about in a negative way for going back to school when she could have turned pro? She's an adult playing children. Isn't that the, the narrative that was attempted to be thrown out there by Cheryl Swoops? Is wasn't that the narrative? That was the narrative. That was what was thrown out there. 
Paige Beckers is levels better than the players in college basketball. Her and Juju, if Juju Watkins could turn pro, she, she, I would tell her to turn pro too. They're better than these women. They're just better. But Juju has at least two more years before she can, before she can even consider it based on the rules right now. So she doesn't have much of a choice, whereas Paige had a choice to make, and she chose to go back to school. She chose to play kids. Sounds messed up, right? The way I phrased it. Now imagine you're Caitlin Clark last year. You had to listen to that bullshit from people like Cheryl Swoops dogging you out publicly, insulting you, degrading you, dismissing you, saying that you're basically an adult playing kids, but now you don't hear the same type of uh, rhetoric out of Cheryl Swoops' mouth. You don't hear it. In fact, she said she was 25 years old. I mean, I didn't know the college students started playing college basketball at 21. But hey, that's what we that's where we're at right now. I I you know, I'm I'll be watching some women's college basketball for sure. I, I will talk about it occasionally. I can't say how much I will. Um I, I know I'm not gonna watch them the way I watched Caitlin last year. Maybe I who knows, maybe I maybe it becomes intriguing. Maybe it does. But she's on a loaded squad. If Caitlin Clark had the talent of UConn at Iowa. Y'all don't understand, man. She'd have won multiple championships. And the fact that I know that Paige Beckers has dealt with injuries, but and UConn has had injuries across the board with their with their team. That's part of life. That's part of the, the game. But when you have 10 Mickey D's, all, 11 in total, 11 Mickey D's All-Americans and a senior transfer from Princeton average almost 16 a game and a national team player and your worst Recruit is ranked 41st in her class. And you don't win? You have backups. You have reserves. Because some of those Mickey D's players are not going to play. They're just not going to play. So you have people that can come in in the event that you, you, you do have injuries. I mean, I read something here where Gino Ariema is, he has concerns about if when Paige is out on the floor, the only person that can handle the ball is the new transfer from Princeton. Oh, that's your job. Start coaching. Start coaching, my dude. You know, he even said this. If Paige and Sarah Strong, who is a freshman, are not both on the floor, then it makes it difficult for other players to kind of know who do we rely on. That's going to take some time. Oh. Obviously, it's going to be difficult in the beginning because we're going to rely so much on those guys for so many things. But it's similar to what we have experienced in the past. It takes a little bit of time. I think that's a joke. That's a joke. Whatever, Gino. Whatever, Gino. Paige Becker's better win a national championship this year. Her season, or her career at UConn will largely, to most people, to most people, be considered a failure. I won't say that because I know what it. I know how hard it is to win, and I think it's disrespectful to people to say some shit like that because you don't know what they go through. You don't know what it is. I'm just saying that she should have turned pro. She should be playing the WNBA. And obviously, more than likely, she'll be the number one pick in the draft. Maybe that's why she went back to school also. She wanted to be the number one pick in the draft. But where we are right now, she hasn't won a Nash, she hasn't won a natty at UConn. She has not won a natty at UConn. And that is something that people at UConn take very, very seriously. The last national championship at UConn was in night in uh 20. Uh, 16. It's been eight years, man. Eight years for Gino Arima to win a national championship. That's pretty rough for someone with his ego. Makes me laugh, but for his ego, yeah, that, that, that he doesn't he doesn't deal with that too well. But uh, 
Let me know your thoughts about this Paige Becker's deal with her going back to school when she could have turned pro and been the number two number two pick in the draft. Love to get your thoughts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Become a member. Ring that bell. Go on over to Rudy's Rant and subscribe over there as well. I appreciate y'all. We are going live tonight, so be there at 930 Eastern time. We are going live. Come on now.